Yo, what's going on guys? Hexmurder here. Gonna be doing a tutorial today on uh, reading and writing memory in C++. So, um, a little bit of prerequisites. You're gonna have to know a little bit of C++. Have a, you know, a decent understanding of how a program works. You should be able to write your own, you know, little console programs before doing this. Uh, you're also going to want to know how Cheat Engine works, so if you've never even heard of it before, you definitely are going to have to look up some tutorials on YouTube. There's thousands upon thousands of them. Um, on the C++ memory hacking, I mean, th there's a few tutorials out there, all basically to show the same thing. I'm not going over anything new, but um, I mean, it's just nice to get a fresh perspective, so I figured I'd throw this video up for anybody who's uh, trying to learn. Uh, so... After you've figured out uh, how Cheat Engine works and stuff, if you haven't done that already, all we're doing is changing the gems value in this tutorial and uh, possibly reading it. So, advantages of uh, doing this in your own code versus in Cheat Engine. Um, first of all, it's a lot less detectable, so if you're doing uh, multiplayer games like Counter-Strike, for example, you're not going to want to have Cheat Engine open or you're going to get back banned like, instantly. So, if you write your own code, uh, Vax going to have a lot harder time figuring out what's going on. They're not even going to know. So any anything that you're going to write, like a wall hack or an aimbot, that's going to be written in C++. Uh, you can use Cheat Engine to find the values for it. It's uh, Cheat, Engine is an ex Cheat Engine is an extremely powerful tool. It's got kind of like a bad connotation behind the name Cheat Engine because a lot of people just don't understand the power of it. They think it's some newbie tool to hack flash games, but it's it's way more than that. So you don't have to use Cheat Engine. You can use T-Search or All Debug or IDA, whatever. I don't care. Just uh, find an address for the game that you're going to hack and uh, let's get into this. So we're going to go to a new project. Go this forever. It doesn't matter. Empty project. And we're going to go ahead and add a source file. As soon as this loads, new item. I guess we can just leave it as source. You can rename it main or whatever. It doesn't matter. Include IO stream, of course. Whoops. And Windows.h, the capital W. And we're going to be using namespace std just for this tutorial. Sorry if my keyboard is like extremely loud. You can't even hear me talking. Um, okay, so. We got our little shell here set up. Now we're gonna make new H window. This is uh, part of the Windows class. Name it H wind. See what find window A. Ask us to pass in a class name. We're gonna pass in null and a window name. And the window name can be very tricky. So uh, there's ways of getting around this later. Uh, it just takes a lot more code, but Right now, this is very simple and basic. We're going to be doing it this way. Window name, you got to make sure you spell it exactly the same with the same capital letters and everything. So take your time and make sure you do that correctly. I think that's how it says. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So, and doing this uh, hwind, hwind thing, that's the same thing as doing int x is equal to, you know, whatever. But we're just using the hwin type instead of an integer or a double. So if, if you're confused, you're pretty new to C++, that's all we're doing. So now we're checking to see if hwin actually found the window. If it didn't find it, if I had a typo in here, it would just remain nothing or null. So if it didn't find anything, didn't find the window open, we're going to I'll put an error, so see how, whoa, my typing is just awful today, alright, then we're going to sleep, so they have time to read it, and then we're going to exit the program because it did not find a window. Please excuse my typing. So, if I had a typo in here or something. Can't find the window. It's going to wait three seconds and exit. So, 
it should just open and close since I have it typed correctly, yeah. Okay, so, if you can't find the window, this code will be executed, else this code will be executed. So, next we're gonna grab the process ID, so dword proc ID, and if there's anything that you don't um, recognize, like dword, you can always just go on msdn and look at the data types here. Dword, 32-bit unsigned integer, same range as regular unsigned integer. However, dwords, excuse me, dwords are used to uh, store hexadecimal addresses for the most part. So, same thing as saying in proc ID, just using a dword once again. So now we're going to use another function from the window.h called get window thread process ID. Takes two parameters here, an hwind and a process ID. So we're going to pass in the hwind that we made and the proc ID that we made. Oh, pass it by reference, sorry. Which means to use the ampersand. So we're passing this by reference, which means it's going to actually use this process ID that we created and it's going to assign it the correct process ID. And a process ID is just right here. The 6BC or whatever. That's the process ID. And it changes every time you open and close the game. So you can't just put, you know, 6BC. You're going to have to obtain it every time. So going to make a handle here. Open process, I think. Yeah, open process. We're going to open the process with all access flag. Uh, that's if we're going to inherit a value or a handle. We're going to put false and ask for the process ID, third parameter. Okay, so we're literally opening the process with all access, which means we can read and write to the memory. All right. <coughs> So now we check if we got the process ID or not. So if the process ID is equal to null, we're going to basically throw the same error, just a little different. Cannot. Okay. So if it did obtain the process ID, now we're going to, I guess we can just write to memory. So we're going to use a function called write process memory first parameter is a handle so we'll pass in our handle second one is an LP void base address so we're gonna go LP, LP void and this is where our address comes in okay Let's see if I can remember that x 0 a b e a 6 c okay and you don't even need these zeros here. The first ones don't matter, but if you want to leave them, you can leave them. It doesn't matter. All right, so now we're going to pass in the value that we want, which we haven't actually made yet. So we'll go in new value. So we'll pass in by reference, new value. And what else does it take? Whoops, if I can read it, geez. Okay, it says LP void buffer size. Okay, so now we're gonna pass in size of new value. And the last parameter is just gonna pass in zero. And the size of uh, just wants to know the size of what it's overwriting. So new value is an int, so it's writing size of int. Same thing, you can just write size event, but uh, sometimes I get a little copy pasty when I'm doing big hacks and uh, I don't pay attention to that one and sometimes it gets screwed up. So it's better to just do new value, new value, then new value int. So uh, that should be it. So if we go by step by step, we find the window. If it didn't find the window, it throws an error. If it was successful, it enters this block of code. Uh, then it creates a process ID, gets a handle on the process. If the process ID wasn't found, it tells you you can't find it. And if it was, it writes to the memory. So if everything went well, 
when we run this, we go back to the game. You can see our gems are going up, and they should stop when it reaches 2,000. So. Alright, so that worked pretty well. So, let's see, let's make this a little more interesting. So it's, it's pretty basic. Uh, I guess we can try reading really quick. Pause this, jeez. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little thirsty and I uh, don't have any water at my desk, so. Let's see, read test is equal to zero. Get rid of this. So instead of writing, we're going to just try and read that same piece of memory. So read test is equal to, oh no, sorry, I'm doing this wrong. We are going to go read process memory. Takes uh, handle again. This time we're going to use pbyte with a little asterisk at the end. And like I said, if you don't understand everything in this tutorial, I mean, you'll get the hang of it. Just uh, keep, don't copy and paste, you know, write your own code, don't copy from other people's stuff. You're not going to learn anything that way. Whether you try and read it or not, just write your own stuff and uh, you'll get the hang of it eventually, I promise. And if you want, you can always look stuff up on MSDN. So, now it takes uh, the address, which I got rid of, let's just paste that real quick. Okay, and then takes what are we going to be reading, I believe, yeah, the buffer, so read test. Okay, so it did work. So I haven't done read process memory this way in a while. So read process memory, um, you don't have to pay attention to any of this. You're going to be writing it over and over and over again. You just need to pay attention to the address, what you're reading, and the size. So if we read this as a size of float, you can see it's going to give us a problem. Well, just kidding. If you had a float value and you tried to read it as an int, it would just throw you some random numbers but uh, just keep in mind try and keep that to be the right size uh, a good way to do that is just to put the one that you're actually trying to read or write another thing we could do here is just enter uh, an infinite loop just let me uh, write this out sorry I cannot type and uh, talk at the same time probably pretty bad but we'll just do it this way Don't get too used to doing things a certain way because your chances are if you're doing it on your own, uh, it may be bad practice. And so just don't get too used to doing it a certain way. If someone points out a better way to do it, don't be afraid to try it and try and get used to that. It's uh, that's how you learn. So, whoops, this may not be the best way to do it, but you know, it works and it's a good way to learn. So we're saying if we get the space bar. As input, we're going to. Hold on one sec, I got this uh, copied over here. Write process memory, the address of new value. And also, we're going to do new value plus plus. So, every time this gets run, if we're pressing the space bar, it's going to write new value. Then it's going to increment it by one. And then it's going to go back around, increment it by one over and over again. So, whoops, sorry. Got two monitors, so used to doing this by myself. And I guess we could just, uh... all right, that should work. Just to give you an idea of uh, some stuff you can do, you know. So while we hold the space bar, our jump should go up. And they're going up way too fast for the game to even catch up. If we pause it, you can see. You get the point. So, play around with it, have fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Any comments, questions, let me know.